Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to use email parser in Zapier in 2024. So if you ever need to extract some important data from your emails and maybe automate the process as well, this tool is perfect for you. From pulling out customer details to tracking specific information, this feature makes it very easy to parse emails and also send data to your favorite apps. So let's get started. Before we start with this video, make sure to watch it from now till the end so you have full experience. First, you'll need to go and open a browser. For me here, I'm using Brave. For you, you can use whatever you want. Once you open that browser, basically just go to this URL section. And first, let's just go and open here zapier.com. If it's your first time, of course, make sure to go or you will find yourself basically on this page instead of this. So if you're already logged in, you'll find yourself in in place that's already logged in, which is this. And if it's your first time, of course, you'll find yourself on their homepage, which is this one. Here, as you can see, you can click on start for free with Google to create an account and or start with an email to create an account and just write, write away the email. But you can also, if you have an account, as an example, log in using a Google account, a Microsoft account, a Facebook account, if you have one of those, so you don't have to go through all the boring steps of logging into your account. And for creating an account, you will find this Google option. So, for example, here I'll just go and click on login to show you like that the the three options that they have. Very simple, as you can see. So, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, and for sign up, as we said you will find like a Google option if you don't want to go through all the boring steps of creating and even logging in into your account. So as an example here on Zapier, you can go and create some Zaps that's automate some stuff for you. So if we go to this list panel and click on create, then Zaps, this will normally take you into in here. So in here, you can start creating stuff for your, uh, for your, depending on whatever you want to automate. So as an example, if you go to the trigger or action uh, as an example, so you can go, of course, and do it manually if you want. It's up to you to do it manually. And if you don't want to do it manually, you can use this copilot. Copilot will help you out. AI tool, of course, this will help you out. It just sent beta, but it's working fine. So, as an example, I want to use uh, email. Sorry, so email parser. Uh, I don't know what do you want to do exactly maybe to collect some data so so to collect some data I'll hit the enter button so let's just see what they are going to create for us of course they will create the trigger and action for us I can just add them if they ask us to provide more information you can do so for me I'll just go and do like whatever random for you of course depending on whatever you're trying to uh, automate exactly so let's just see so i just typed i want to use email parser to collect some data so it's just an outline for your zaps example you can use email parser as an example to uh, collect data and automatically store it in google sheets here's how you can build your zap as an example they give us two zaps so i'll just go and click on add steps to zaps and as you can see it will be added right here so what should i do in here very simple i can just go and fix any problem that's in here so, for example, the app, you'll have to choose the app. The trigger, as an example, which, uh, what's going to trigger this automation? So, for example, when you receive a new email, maybe a new mailbox, it's up to you. Then you'll have to go and sign in into that specific account. So, once you click on sign in, normally they open this for you. So, let's just wait for it. Uh, so, it will take us, of course, to where we should connect our accounts. So, something went wrong. Okay, I'll just go and try again. Why not? And it should open again in a new tab. And of course, I'll have to go and connect into in my accounts right away. So, okay, login. Yeah, as you can see here, all you need to do, just go and log in to parse. And of course, you can log in also with your Zapier account right away. You don't have even to have an account. If you have, if you don't, if you want to, don't want to create an example account with Zapier, you can do so. But sorry, I'll just go here and click on login with Zapier account. Very simple. So parser wants to access to your Zapier account. Uh, so you can access Zapier from Parser websites. So yeah, I'll choose this account as an example. And of course, by connecting Zapier account to Parser, you've authorized Parser to access your profile information, name, email, and address. So I'll accept that and click on Authorize. Make sure to do the same, of course, if you want to use Parser. So Zapier would like to access the data from the following permissions for access to the Parser account. Authorize as well. So once I do so, I guess it should be connected now. So yeah, it's connected. 
as you can see so when i receive a new email yeah why not configure of course if you have any configuration of course this configuration will change depending on the trigger event that you choose so for the mailbox as an example uh, no options are available because i have no i just created the account so just check a new mailbox what's the configuration of it so yeah continue okay there's no configuration for that so even greater so test the tr your trigger of course after that you'll have to test your trigger for sure i'll just go here and click on test and if tested and everything is corrected you'll find the check button right here or right here it's the same and that means it's going to be all good to go so let's just wait a little bit until it tested so we couldn't find mailbox as i said because i just created the account so i'll just go and click on skip test and basically as you can see you'll find the check button after that because i click on skip test because i have no mailbox for it's going to be the same of course to connect your google sheets account so you will need to go and choose the app choose the events as an example creates a spreadsheet row and the account of course okay it's not connected for some reason you'll have to connect an account basically uh, normally it's already connected for me but some reason the connection for some reason the, the connection is expired so i'll just go and uh, establish another connection yeah i'll just go here and choose my google accounts because google uh, sheets is example using my, my google account so very simple i'll just wait a little bit in here and basically it should be connected so i'll just click on allow and everything in here and it should be connected of course i can choose like uh, how to configure this uh, creating your and the new row as an example so it should be connected right away and so it seems for some reason it's not wanting to connect but anyway you can you can change the app of course or whatever this should work for you i don't know why it's not working for me anyway after that you'll have to configure then you should test it out everything once everything is working as intended you should be then good to go so once it's done click on publish and whatever you've done in here whatever automation you're done will be working forever so whenever you receive a new email mailbox it will create a new spreadsheet or whatever you did in here so that's gonna be it for me today thank you for watching and i'll catch you in the next video